A visual illusion is a consistent misinterpretation of a real visual stimuli. Or another way of saying it is when perception consistently differs from objective reality. Now there are over 200 named illusions, such as the Harrison spiral, the cross, Orbison square circle, Orbison circle circle, the herring bow, and many others. For VCE psychology, there are only two you need to study, and these are the Mueller-Lie illusion and the Ames room illusion. Now the Mueller-Lie illusion asks you to think about which line is longer, the ones with the arrowheads or the ones with the feather tails. So, which is longer? Now the illusion works when you rotate it as well on that side, but the illusion is based on the fact that these two lines, the two inner lines, are of equal lengths. But we perceive them, we perceive the one with the outward ones as being longer than the other one, even though in reality they are exactly the same length. Why do we perceive the arrowheads as shorter than the ones from feather tails? That is what the illusion's about. Another way of saying is that even though each of these lines cast the same retinal size image, they're still being perceived as different lengths due to the endings. Now there are a number of reasons why we misperceive these illusions. Three theories, in fact, are being proposed. The first one is called the biological factor theory. And that is that because we are, too, you know, we, we're built in to misperceive 2D figures. After all, we live in a 3D world and our vision is 3D. And so for the biological factor just says we misinterpret the mule lie illusion just because we're not built to perceive 2D images well. The cognitive factor states that we perceive because we're so used to seeing you know these lines in the context of being of depth perception and so the line with the arrowheads are there because we perceive them as being closer and so therefore when they cast the same image one must be longer than the other. The third theory is called the perceptual compromise theory where two or more visual cues conflict with each other we form a perception we compromise by taking the middle ground in what we would see. So the perceptual compromise theory is based on the fact that the conflict between the length of the middle line versus the length of the overall figure caused by closure results in us perceiving the length of the middle line as being longer for figures that have an overall La longer length due to closure. Now this theory explains it even when we place the tips with circles, something the cognitive factor theory doesn't help to explain. So that's the Mueller-Lie illusion. The Ames room illusion is based on the fact that we perceive the Ames room as being rectangular in shape where in reality it's actually a different shape than that. Now this is based on the apparent distance theory. The apparent distance theory states that when we have two images that are of same size in our retina they're perceived as being the same size All right. same size unless one of those images appears to be further away in distance then it will be interpreted as larger. So we have two images casting the same retinal size but it's when one is being perceived as being further away it therefore is being interpreted as being larger. So when we put this in the context of the Ames room illusion 
the misperception is caused by viewing objects through a peephole into a trapezoid shaped room that is much longer and higher on one side than the other but assuming it's a normal rectangular room. One of these corners, one back corner, is actually twice the distance away as well as being higher and with the floor sloping down to it. Right? And so what we perceive is a room of rectangular shape but in reality one is much larger than the other. So this demonstrates our tendency to maintain shape constancy over size constancy. We find it very difficult to maintain size constancy when our depth cues are being misled. So this illusion even works when we understand it. People will still perceive the illusion of people changing sizes as they move around the room even though we know this is an illusion and we know how it works. Now a past exam question asked for three marks to explain in terms of its design how the Ames room creates this illusion. To get the full three marks you need to make mention the room is trapezoid shape but is being perceived as a normal rectangular room with one of its back corners twice as far away from the viewer as the other back corner. Second point, as a person crosses the room their retinal size image changes as their distance from the viewer changes as they walk from to the back or move to the closer corner. However, viewing through a peephole removes the strongest binocular depth cues leaving only monocular depth cues to help us make sense of the room and with the way they've painted the room with perspective it is, we assume it's a normal rectangular room. This ends up giving us a perception of size change in the midst of the, the room being kept shape constant. So shape constancy overrules size constancy in this, in this area. So in summary, the Mueller-Lai illusion and the Ames room illusion are the two illusions we need to know for VCE. The Mueller-Lai illusion states that two lines of equal length with opposite shape ends are perceived as being of different lengths, even though the reality is that they both of the same length. So, the way we explain why the feather tails are being perceived, the line with the feather tails is being perceived as longer than the line with the arrowheads is because of the perceptual compromise theory, whereby the length of the middle line versus the length of the overall figure caused by co closure all right, ends up with a perceived length being larger. So the conflict causes us to compromise our perception of it and perceive the length of the larger longer figure caused by closure to be longer. The Ames room is based on the fact that we're viewing objects in a trapezoid or trapezium shaped room that is much longer and higher on one side than the other but assuming it is a normal rectangular room. This demonstrates our tendency to maintain shape constancy over size constancy. Therefore it shows our inability to maintain size constancy when our depth cues are being misled. Now this illusion continues to work even though we understand it. People will still perceive the illusion of people changing sizes as they move around the room. So, Mueller-Lie illusion and the Ames room illusion. Thanks for watching.